Unless there's more staff or something like that. I have 6.30 folks, so I'd like to convene this uh, meeting, the Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for March 16th, 2023, in the session. Uh, Holly, would you take the roll, please? President Smalley? Here. Vice President Hill? Here. Director Atman? Here. Director Falls. Here. Director Maywood. Here. Okay. Uh, um, Tina, could you report now on the uh, one item that we discussed during the closed session? With the Yes, um, the report of actions taken in closed session is that the board voted unanimously to approve the district manager's goals and objectives for December 20, uh, 22 to 11, that's November 2023, with specified changes and to publish the final document on the district's website. Thank you. There's nothing to report on the other two items under the in discussed in closed session. Um, Additions or deletions to the agenda? Staff has none, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, oral communications. Uh, do we have any members of the public in attendance? Does anybody from the public uh, have anything that they want to bring up for items that are not on the agenda this evening? Don't see anybody. And for the members of the public that are um, in attendance remotely, I see nobody from the public physically here in the meeting. Mark, I, I wanted to suggest that it might be helpful given that this is our first meeting back in person to see if either of the attendees via Zoom uh, to make sure they can hear us. See if somebody can let us know if they okay. can hear us. Mr. Dolson, could you comment on the audio quality? Yes, can you hear me? Can you hear us? <laughs> so the audio quality is not good. The audio quality is, is reverberant and it's a challenge to make out what people are saying, um, sometimes successful, sometimes not. That's just my experience, but it's much worse than it was prior to going to the new meetings format. Okay. Acoustic tile will help. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And Rick, it's my understanding is yes, you're so aware we received a price quote uh, and we're moving ahead uh, on the acoustic tiles. I'm not sure we have an installation date yet, but uh, we are moving on that for both rooms. Okay. Can I ask a question? Would it be helpful to have a microphone system? I don't know. So, you should not to get off well, too far off the agenda. This is a temporary setup for tonight. The real Zoom monitors, microphones, cameras will be installed the last week of March. Other equipment's coming. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We ask for your indulgence, Mark. Any anything else from that from a procedural standpoint before we? Since this is the first uh, in three years of an in-person meeting. Okay. Uh, the president's report. I have nothing at this point that I want to uh, bring up. Um, well, the district manager's report is at the end. Okay. Uh, moving on then. Unfinished business. Uh, the investment update. District Finance Manager uh, okay. will present that to the board. Okay, so this item is in regards to the update on the investment of our 2019 COP and 2021 COVID loan proceeds. At the January 18th Budget and Finance Committee meeting, district staff discussed investing, investing the unspent funds from both loans into higher yielding accounts. The funds were previously being held in the Santa Cruz County Fund, earning an average of 1.4%, and that is based on the December 2022 interest apportionment provided by the County of Santa Cruz. 
Uh, district staff chose to invest in treasury bills or T-bills, which are short-term U.S. government debt obligations backed by the Treasury Department with a maturity of one year or less. These bills are sold at a discount to the face value, and when the bill matures, you are paid its face value. So, for example, if you buy a T-bill with a face value of $990,000, you buy it at a discount um, at $980,000. When the bill matures, you're paid the full $990,000, so making the, the 10 k on that. Um, the investments are being made through Wells Fargo in accordance with the district's investment policy. And the district has a long-standing relationship with Wells Fargo, our operating checking accounts with them, and they were very quick to respond to our inquiry regarding the investments, and we wanted to move as quickly as possible on these. Um, so Exhibit A in the agenda shows the project schedule uh, that was prepared, which shows the amount available from each loan allocated to each remaining open project with an estimated begin construction date. Uh, our representative with Wells Fargo used the schedule to determine our liquidity needs and which T-bills to invest in. Uh, the, the project schedule will be reconciled monthly and reviewed as project expenses are incurred to determine if changes are needed or if we have more time to reinvest. Um, a schedule of each T-bill purchase with their yield and maturity date will be provided for review at the next budget and finance meeting as well as board meeting. Um, we will then continue to provide quarterly reporting uh, for the investment policy, and we will continue to monitor as the project as the projects progress. Yeah, any questions? Uh, we will uh, take them from the board. However, before I uh, solicit questions from the rest of the board, I do want to uh, make note of an email that I received earlier this week from uh, one of our rate payers, Mark Lee. Um, Mark Lee is the individual that brought the recommendation to us previously that we considered these T bills. Um, he recommends not uh, placing these through Wells Fargo, but instead through uh, JP Morgan Chase, um, based on the liquidity levels of um, Chase Morgan being on the order of four times what uh, Wells Fargo has. Uh, I received this on Monday. I think in part uh, the um, Silicon Valley Bank collapse that occurred last week uh, is what prompted uh, Mark Lee to put this together because he cites that uh, in his email <clears throat> to me. Uh, but given the fact that this was not part of the agenda. <laughs> uh, was not able to be circulated to the rest of the board, but uh, he cites uh, Wells Fargo cash and equivalents at 1.59 billion versus uh, Chase Morgan at uh, 5.67 billion uh, in liquidity. So I wanted to put that out there. Uh, to let the rest of the board know that I received that. And uh, from there, we'll start to take other I questions. I also received it. I think we're going to be Okay. Okay. Good. I'm glad that. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, then I will ask uh, the staff seen that also, Ken. Yes, we did. Um, and okay. I guess my response to that would be that. The T bills are backed by the government, and so you know when we go, when when the bill matures, you know we're going to get that money back, and it gets you know put back into our you know operating account, and we'll have funds available to spend on the project expenses. So I'm not sure it's entirely relevant because they are backed by the government. Um, so that's, right. that's my response okay. to that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Jamie? I was just wanting to clarify, in the email that he sent us, was he making an apples to apples comparison about treasury bills? No. Um, no. no, I didn't think so. So yeah, I mean, because that was my reaction too when I read the staff report was this is a short-term investment vehicle. It's not like the Silicon Valley banking issues, which were you know long term long. So I have less concern about the bank institution itself. Any other questions on the uh, 
Not specifically. Yes. What uh, the Brown Mark was bringing up, but any other questions on the agenda item specifically? A comment about Mark. Great question. Yeah. yeah. Sure. If Jane is done. Right. Thank you. Okay. I didn't bother to put it. Um, yeah. I mean, I understand why Mark sent the email, and I, I think given the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, um, which I had an account there, fortunately, on 250. <laughs> For deliberate reasons, um, I, I understand the concern that you expressed, it, but but you know, I think he misunderstood what was happening. We're not we're not actually buying any equity in Wells Fargo. We're buying equity in the United States government, and, and okay, we can explain we can explain that to the senior next because I I figure we'll probably hear from him about this. I did have a couple of questions about the. The T bill range is about four percent plus, more or less, at this point. Um, it's about anywhere from four. I'll send out the schedule, yeah. but uh, like over four and a half to five, depending on the length. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And are you planning on doing a lateral approach on the uh, the T bill? We so what we did is we determined when we would need funding for the projects, yeah. and then we he what he did is he invested with the maturity date closest to when like the project starts just be conservative but as we get going and evaluate our like expenses we need for the projects we can determine if we once it matures we want to reinvest into another one month or three months depending on our liquidity needs those latter the thicker steps yeah right <laughs> yeah. <Or steps. laughs> yeah and uh last question is what kind of cost did they charge us or did they do it because we're doing so much business with them they didn't charge us anything. so the email he sent me an email and said that this is uh, our rep at Wells Fargo it looks like management decided to waive the safe banking fees um so I'll circle back with them and see it it because at this point given your investment in T-bills really the, the cost of the transaction is is what the focus is because there's no risk on the uh, yeah security. right. So he said, please don't be received manager approvals to waive safekeeping fees until further notice. So I I'll clarify what further notice means. Well, um, and also if there's any other cost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I know they operate very thin margins on these T bills for a lot of other places that we can invest in. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, I think this was really fantastic. Thank you. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I'm satisfied. I think I think we've done the right thing here, and uh, you know whether you personally care for one bank or another, I think the risk is uh, is, is almost zero here because we're putting the money in the treasury. So the bank doesn't have the money for hardly any time at all. And the chances of a bank failure losing anything is almost nothing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions either, Bob. That's, that's the one that I had. So, um, good or bad? Um, is here the question of the risk profile on our accounts and as far as but that's a different thing. That's a different thing. That's not on the agenda. That's right, right? Yes. Okay. Um, well, given that, um, <clears throat> then I don't see a specific motion, so uh, I'll end up on it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, does any member of the public uh, wish to comment on this item? I don't see any. Uh, so, uh, are we concluded on that then? Mm -hmm. Since I understand we don't need to have a motion. Yeah, just say that one. Okay. All right. Thank you then. Uh, moving on then to the uh, second item on the agenda is the uh, uh, new business. And it's the uh, memo template. Uh, and uh, our planner will present the uh, sign in for. Okay. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Nice to see everyone in person again. That's a little strange. That's it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this item is Okay. Sorry. This item is regarding adoption of the memo template. So over the years, many versions of the memos have been used to address the board and committee members to standardize and better organize memos. 
district staff and the administrative committee created a memo template with instructions, which are included as exhibit A, the instruction cover sheet details memo goals, objectives, and general instructions. The template itself outlines each memo section and gives examples of recommendations and motions. At the March 3rd administrative committee meeting, the committee reviewed and the draft template and recommended the board adopt with a few changes incorporated. These changes included adding environmental impacts, if there are any, provide further context in the background section, and ensure prior memos, reports, and other relevant documents were included. Staff recommends the board adopt the memo template and allow for further improvements to be identified over the following month. That was prepared to answer questions. Okay. All right. Bob? I'm just really happy to see this. This was something that you know I had advocated for a, a few years back and just wasn't time. We were busy with a lot of other things. So I'm glad this was back in front of us. I think it'll be fantastic in terms of making sure that the board members are informed of the relevant information for the items in front of them. And uh, I'm assuming you can also use links to uh, documents that are on the website and that, which should be great. Um, I think this will be great for the community. So thank you guys for putting it together. Something to do with that, I'm sure. So great. Thank, thank you a lot for doing it. It's a great job. Okay. All right. And I neglected to go to the chair of the admin committee to see if she had any uh, things to reflect on this first. Thank you, Mark. Um, I would just say I'm, I'm really happy with the template. I think that it will, you know, be a significant improvement just in terms of like the organization of information. I want to, you know, emphasize what Bob said about like including links, including other information. I didn't mean for it to be like, you know, 400 pages of information, but just like point us to the links of, of past, you know, staff reports on the topics that were relevant that we might want to review as information for the, you know, current uh, decision, that would be really helpful to me. Um, so I, I love that we're uh, encouraging people to do that. I know it's gonna be a work in progress. I also really um, encourage staff to, to look at the um, language that's being offered around the uh, resolutions. It's really helpful to the board to know clearly like what's being asked of us. Um, and sometimes the resolutions can be a little like, we're like, okay, what are we adopting here exactly? So um, I think that we gave a lot of like, so examples of the, the way that we would, you know, understand, oh, okay, this is what we're at, being asked to do. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with the template, so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm happy with, um, I expect there will be some modifications over time, but that's the way things work. So, I don't know. So we got to work a little better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Uh, I do have one request, um, and I'm looking at the at the memo template. And can you bold whatever you're asking the board to do as far as the recommendation? Because I don't see that in this one, and I'm used to seeing that in other ones, such as the next memo that we're looking at, uh, where the requested motion is bold. So. It makes it easier for us on the board then to, to grab that as we're flipping through the various documents that we have in front of us. Okay. Um, and then good job on setting the standard. Yay. Yay. Uh, consistency then that makes it easier. I would hope for the staff to be able to write these, but then also for us that are reviewing them so that we can see some more information in a similar format down the road. Uh, and at last, uh, any thoughts, Holly, on who edits these to get them in from performance, Holly? Well, um, I suppose that that would be my job. And the key to that is getting them to me so that I'm not having to rush them out as soon as I get them. So the sooner I can get this information, I can review it and edit so that it, uh, you know, follows the, the template, all of that sort of thing. But um, yeah, I, I, I will need to get it in advance. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that's actually a trigger another question, which is all the staff's buy ins, right? And this is all good to go. Thumbs up. 
Okay, well, no, I'm just asking, but yeah, it, does, does, does that will actually make Paul's job wherever it is and it's that it's it, um, easier? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do have a couple of questions. I'd like to send a couple of versions of the contract approval and recommended motion. Can you speak up, please, Gina? Oh, sorry about that. I, I was requesting to send Carly a couple uh, of bullet points related to contract approval to, to put in here so that we have a couple of distinctions that may be important depending on what's being done. See, we are five minutes already. This is great. Okay. Um, any comments from members of the public on this memo template? Being done, um, then we recommend that the board adopts the memo. So I move ask. that the board adopt the uh, new memo template uh, with the suggested additions that the council will make. Okay, second. All right. Any questions? Molly. Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director False. Yes. And Director Mayhood. Yes. Okay. Moving on. The uh, next item on the agenda is the Peavine tree work. All right. Thank you. And uh, District Engineer will present this report to you. So, thank you, Rick. In keeping with the previous item, this memo is in the new format. So, uh, if anyone has any changes or suggested revisions, this here's your opportunity. So, that said, <laughs> staff are recommending that we proceed with tree work on the Peavine portion of the Peavine M five mile raw water alignment. In this case, what we are looking for is authorization from the board to perform, perform a hazardous tree survey, which will identify all trees which are hazardous and or damaged along the alignment preparatory to removal. Removal being the second phase of this particular operation will then allow us to get a topographical survey complete, which is the next thing we need in order to proceed with determining exactly how it is we're going to proceed on replacing this raw water pipeline. To that end, I presented a memo and the proposal from Mike Powers Forestry, and we'll take questions. Okay, Josh, you said Peabine and Five Mile? The greater Peabine and Five Mile project. This is limited to Peabine. Okay, okay. that's one of the issues. So it's, yes, it's Peabine section. Okay, all right. Um, Questions that Jeff? So uh, it wasn't clear to me what is happening with the, uh, the slash uh, or trees that get removed. They will be locked and left in place as erosion control measures. Okay. Any opportunity to um, recover any funds by selling this firewood or anything like that? Frankly, the need to backpack it all out would eliminate that possible income. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there, there's no vehicular access. I guess I was, I know there's going to cost more money to mark the trees than it does to take them out. And so um, if, if we're going to remove them, why is it necessary to mark them? Geo-reference Is there? This is our our land. So, are there? Yes. Are there metal things? So the, there is a reason. Uh, the reason is that in order to get FEMA reimbursement for the work, we must be able to provide FEMA with a latitude and longitude to uh, ten significant figures. A very roughly roughly one meter of accuracy for every single tree greater than six inches in diameter at breast height or roughly four feet above the 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit that demonstrates where they are. And if we don't, people won't pay us. So that's why we have to. Yeah, the, uh, the 10 digits was facetious, I hope, because one meter starts getting into the differential. No, it was not facetious. We well, use we use ten digit accuracy. Wow. I think FEMA would probably that's more than one week, but I'm better than one week. Kind of yeah, right. Just under a meter, yes. We provide greater accuracy than FEMA requires because that's the equivalent we use. Sorry, do you mean decimal four and decimal point six? For ten. Yes. Okay, got it. All right. So I was okay. Because I was freaking out. It was 10 on the other the right side. No, no, not 10 significant difference. But roughly one meter. I guess the other question I had is just to be really clear. So the, the number two trail clearing, that's actually cutting down on the trees that you identify. That is removal or cutting down of identified hazardous trees, lopping them up in place and scattering them on the side. Did, did we do an RFP for this or solicit um, bids from uh, multiple suppliers? We have not. And is there a reason for that? Yes, because the primary other forester that we would use indicated he was not interested. So we could have gone through the process and gotten one bid or simply skipped to the asset for it. That's fine. If, if there's only two guys in the area that can do the work, um, because I because of the fact they need to be registered professional foresters. Um, okay. I thought maybe it might have been just the, the, the amount of the money that we're talking about. Okay, great. So at this point, when this is all done, it'll be safe for everybody to go out there and make the trail and whatever they need to do, etc. Weather permitting on any given day, yes. Very cool. Okay. Thank you. Jamie? Um, I don't have any specific questions about the um, Peter and Replacement Project, although a really interesting catch about it being more expensive to mark the trees than to take them out. I, I just, just, you know, it's a necessary next step in the, in the um, preparation for a tree removal. But I will say, since you invited comments on the staff report, um, I really well written. Thank you. I thought it was um, really clear. Um, the only thing I would ask is that on the recommendations, don't worry about putting read more because if we don't read it, we're not doing our jobs. Noted. But otherwise, thank you very much. It was great staff report. Um, so, to be clear, the 13,550, that covers all of the tree removals? So I assume somebody's been out there already to assess about how many of these trees. Yeah. Okay, that is my understanding. Okay. okay. My powers look very confident in this number. So okay, good. good. Uh, so last week we spent five grand getting nine trees removed without any surveys. We spent seven hundred thousand that is seven hundred trees yes. after the fire. And that's that's okay. Understood. Um, do we have um, an alignment, or is the alignment that we're using the alignment for the pipe to burn up? It is the existing alignment. Okay. Okay. That's what we're that's what we're going with. Then. Okay. Um, any environmental impact? This, this is. I didn't see that in the memo, but I do see that in the draft. This particular work right. is in the nature of immediate repairs, mm -hmm. which we can do without okay. getting clearance. Okay, but once we get beyond this, we will need to look at environmental factors. Agree. Okay. Yeah, we'll also need to complete some biological surveys and potentially cultural. Um, so at least nesting bird, if we're starting before September first. For the for the tree removal. for the actual tree removals. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and I have to go back to the previous item on the agenda since the memo template says that, but that particularly for the construction budgets that you're dealing with, any of those, even if it's no 
the guard went over there. Just put us one line in there. So you can keep up standing and say, then we don't ask that question. Okay. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have on. Um, anybody from the public want to ask questions or comment on this tree removal item? If not, um, I'd like to make the motion that the board authorize the district manager to enter into negoti negotiations with Vicarious Forestry LLC to finalize the award of the Peavine Pipeline Hazard Tree Survey Inventory and Trail Clearing in the amount of thirty-one thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. Thank you, Holly. Would you take President it? Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackerman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. And Director Mayhood. Yes. Okay. Moving on, the update of the San Lorenzo River North Coast Sanitary Survey. Yes, Tony, can you present this time? Of course. So for the past few years, the district has partnered with the city of Santa Cruz to meet the Division of Drinking Water, or DDW's, requirements of completing a sanitary survey of the watershed. The sanitary survey must be completed for all watersheds that act as a drinking water source through partnership with the district. Or so, sorry. <laughs> through partnership, the district has been able to meet this requirement with minimal investment. However, this economic approach has led the document to be recycled throughout the years. This year, staff spent a significant amount of time working with the consultant and making revisions. The document does meet all DDW requirements and highlights and more takeaways, but staff feel that in the future, the document could be significantly improved. Due to budgeting restrictions and time constraints to meet DDW's deadlines, staff in the city agreed to move ahead with submission of a survey to DDW after considerable edits requested by the district were made. These edits included additional information on the impacts of the CBU fire on the watershed and district lands, and a cover summary sheet highlighting key sources of contaminants and recommendations. In the future, staff recommends continuing to partner with the City of Santa Cruz, but starting with a fresh document instead of recycling the original document. It is recommended that the board review and accept the 2023 update for the San Lorenzo River and North Coast Watershed Sanitary Survey and staff is prepared to answer questions. Okay. Um, Gail, we'll start with you. Yes. Um, questions? This is quite a monstrous thing, isn't it? So, um, and I can see how um, it can be a cut and paste job that eventually needs to be redone. I, I was very relieved to see that uh, it's a very inactive it will have a volcanic direction. <laughs> Are you sure? Uh, so let's say so some, the of the some of the geology was a little scrambled, but uh, this, this report doesn't bother me too much because I don't think that there's stuff that is going to be acted on shortly the way, for example, some of our Santa Margarita reports are. Um, so it's, it's not worth the effort um, to go into, into detail. Um, a couple of things I thought were interesting. One was that with the uh, recent announcement of the new um, uh, PFAS EPA requirements of which you've got to be under four parts per trillion. And that actually is, is probably two orders of magnitude higher than they eventually want to go because we accept that at the detection level that most of the things are. It was interesting that um, they got a number of hits um, in the San Jose River. They were above that. And a lot of things are close. Um, I don't see the data for SLD, and I'm hoping that our ships will be not problematic, but I guess that's a question. Do so we have information on that? I, I would think that it'd be less because we're the, the geology that we're in, but um, given especially that we've got a whole lot of watershed that burned, um, it would just be useful to know um, and to, to track that. Um, there, this is something that really scares the heck out of me because I suspect that we're going to find out that 90 percent of the service order is in violation of the application. It's 
standards and how you figure that is going to apply. Um, the other question I had was there was a statement here about um, that there's an upward trend in the uh, coliform uh, abundances in um, both Fall Creek and uh, in uh, Foreman Creek. And the most notable was the big jump in 2021. And so I guess one question I have is when were these measurements made in 2020? In other words, were they before the fire? That's a great question. And that would be something that, so Jesse, our water quality uh, manager, did go through the document as well for the water quality section. So that might be something that might be better. It, it, it just said in here that this is under investigation, but it's pretty important that we know when those tests were made because if that number is pre fire, mm -hmm. um, then what we, when we recollect in 2021, what we're getting then is, a, is some effect of perhaps it has something to do with the fire. Now, I don't know why California would necessarily go up with the fire. James may know when we said we didn't want to take California sampling and our volunteers to apply, like what time of year, if it would be before the fires or after for 21. Well, we do that monthly. Once so, that's so these are the monthly, these are, okay, so these yeah. are the annual geometric means. Yeah, we, so we do that monthly and it's, it rotates throughout the whole district. So we actually take weekly coliform bacteria tests separate, but it rotates throughout the district. So it's a continuous all the time sampling thing. That we do. But I guess I, I would still say what I was going to say, which is that we should at least for those for the fall creek and Portland creek, which are the places we're getting our water right now, uh -huh. is go back and look at those data before the fire. Okay, so now raw water, water is different. The raw water is quarterly. No, I, I understand that. I, okay. I understand that these are raw water values. Uh -huh. This is not what people are drinking. But right. I, I'm just trying to understand whether this is a fire effect, whether it's, or as Rick suggested, that it may have something to do with uh, a drought, although 2021 was also a drought. We can look and see when the samples were taken and all that data. That, that's pretty important. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, yeah. to answer that question. No problem. Yeah. Sir? Yes. Len? Bob? Yeah, just had a couple of questions. Um, is this something that's driven primarily by the city of Santa Cruz and we piggyback on it? That's right. So in the past, the city, we actually, I don't believe, complied in 1996 when the first report was due. I believe the, the actual um, requirements are in 1991 with the five-year intervals, and then we were supposed to submit by 1996, and I don't believe we actually did. And at that time, I'm not sure exactly what the history is there. I don't know if Rick knows off the top of his head. Oh, okay. Speak up a bit. So the, for the compliance, it started in 1991, and I don't believe the district actually submitted a report for 1996 when the first one was due. And I believe we started to partner with the city um, in 2006 was the first one we did with them. And so they had completed it for our entire watershed. And we were able to partner with them because we share the same source waters in the watershed. And is the is it your view that uh, the content and uh, the view is mostly the Santa Cruz city of Santa Cruz right. view of things in terms of assessing uh, a variety of the factors? Yes, because the report started out as just a city document, it does highlight a lot of city portions. So what I ended up doing this year, particularly, was really adding in. And SLVWD does this, and here's the components we're doing for ourselves to protect the source water. And, and you found they were amenable to your tenants, right? With, without yeah. any issue. Yeah. And from a cost point of view, is it? Do you have an idea what the split of cost is? So we we do it by connection. So the city does pay the larger portion of the document. We paid eighteen thousand this year for our portion. Mm -hmm. And I think I actually have that I can provide to you um, the breakdown. Yeah, I understand. I mean, it, it probably isn't significant. I just uh, be interesting to we have a lot more commercial. It's not an apples and apples type thing, given the connection deltas between the organizations, but it may not be the uh, material. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. So 
Rick, on our website, we have annual sanitary surveys or personal water safety surveys. And we did not do one or we don't have them posted for 2022. Is this a replacement for that? We do it every five years. Okay, well, if there are annual ones for that should be a separate report. The sanitary survey that are annual are with the actual water system yes. and the distribution system and the treatment system. Okay, did we do one in 2022? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the report's not complete yet from the state. Okay. It'll be reviewed after the GSP. So anyway, my only question was, you know, how does this relate to that? Gotcha. And so that one, the ones we've been putting, putting on our website are our reports. Yes. Just relate to us. And this is a combined larger scale. Right. It's, right. it's looking at the water. Yeah. 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 Where the other ones don't. Yeah. Okay. And um, is that why we don't see 2022 data? In here. Exactly. So it covers 2017 to 2021. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, chapter six, as I was trying to go through it, seems to say to me, uh, continue doing his testing, continue what we've been doing, uh, continue doing the same thing. Um, is there anything that the report results in us? Uh, doing as far as any significant new actions that we will implement? Not, not really. I think okay. the other part of it being That's a recycled I, document is it does kind of tend to stick to the same, you know, our, sort, our contaminants, our risk of contaminants yeah. don't change. That's they, they make a lot of recommendations, but to me, it looked like all of the recommendations were things we're already doing and that we've been doing. And it's probably the same recommendations that they've seen in the last 10 or 15 years. Okay. Okay. All right. Those are the questions that I had then. Oh, um, one uh, editorial point. Since we've already talked about memo templates and formats, the, the proposed uh, motion comes at the end and we've already told us the board's supposed to follow the recommendation. So look at that. <laughs> what do you do future ones? Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from the public on this uh, sanitary survey aspect? Seeing none. Um, so I believe that you're asking us to accept this update. And I'd like to make the motion that the board accept the uh, 2023 update for the San Lorenzo River and North Coast Watersheds Sanitary Survey. Second. Holly. President Smalley. Yes. Vice President Hill. Yes. Director Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Mayhood. Yes. Okay. Um, that concludes the uh, new business items. Uh, the consent agenda. Uh, does anybody uh, want to comment on this? Otherwise, it's approved as, as noted in here. Uh, district reports. Uh, District Manager, I understand you have something. Yes, um, we received today from State Water Board the funding agreement, the signed funding agreement from, from the state for Brackenbury and um, Four Springs. So that um, now we can start requesting reimbursement for Mr. and we do have a funding agreement in place. So, uh, Santa says his voice does. I understand. So we can submit those invoices then. Good. I am uh, also wanting to know. So what's the turnaround time for, for this DWR? Or when we submit invoices. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, about how far in uh, are we to the uh, in terms of expenditures that we're gonna 
That's from the immediate reversion. Do you have any idea, Josh? Percentage wise, dollar wise. Dollar wise, dollar wise, yes. 120 higher than 50. I would be reluctant to put an exact number on it, but I would say 100 to 150 in there. It's pretty substantial. Yes, it is. I, I would have been very nervous if we had one of this, but we have some discussion. We more than expected. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Uh, department status reports. Um, we're throwing. Uh, any questions on these? Um, we'll start with you, Jeff. On the department. Okay. Yeah. Jamie. Some Bob. I did notice we're at eighty seven point five percent on surface water. It just get us to that. Can you get us over that hump? <laughs> yeah, but if the storms didn't turn the creeks up and uh, really dirty to bid water, the uh, plants wouldn't have to shut off. Yeah. But once it gets super dirty, but they, we get them back online pretty quick. And we're still sending surface water to Scotts Valley and the Woodward area, and we can continue doing that for a foreseeable future. Well, under the emergency situation, you see the fire work. So we're we're kind of doing in lieu already in some ways because we're not having to pump in uh, that's correct. So that's valley or right. that's correct. Which is the that's Mon Pico aquifer that we're yes. tapping into. There's actually a couple of different ones coming out of there. We anticipate service water will be strong this year. Yeah. Oh, way in June. I'm shocked that Jerry said that. <laughs> I'm pretty confident on that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> my hillside right now. Yeah. You, you, might be, you might be doing surface water for longer than yeah. you. Yeah. Okay, no, that's great news. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Uh, a couple of questions from me on the engineering report. Uh, Josh, when do you expect Sandus will complete the design and update their Engineers cost assessment for for consolidation for for fracking break for spring. Yeah. I'm expecting a complete set of preliminary plans at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. That is for all the pipeline work. Does not include necessarily the tank site. The tank site work, which is not funded on the state PWR grant, will be following that. The updated cost estimates should be coming away from that preliminary plan set. Okay. Good. Um, and on the quail hollow pipeline, uh, you noted the uh, damage uh, that's been done out there. Um, is any of that potentially uh, related to the fact that we had a contractor out there constructed and we disturbed? Ground, uh, or is it potentially yes? Okay, the situation as of this afternoon. So information is not necessarily in the packet here. We had Granite Rock on site today. They had moved back up a little bit. There were two episodes, if you will, of damage to put all over. The first happened at the entrance to Quail Hollow Park. The county took responsibility for it, built a diagonal across an under drain with an outlet into the field in the park, which they own entirely their project. The second episode, which is much more recent, this past storm, the last two storms, we started seeing sinkholes moving down Quail Hollow towards uh, Zion. So just down slope of West Circle and We talked to the county, played them for safety through this last couple of days, had Granite Rock out today where they removed and damaged AC. There was a couple of sinkholes, one of which had actually broken all the way through. They found two voids in the sand. The sand had just washed out. And it appears that that washout happened when water struck the 
backfill that we put in slurry, which acted as a water bar, forced water down below to where pipe is, the sand washed it out. I would like to emphasize that that slurry is a county specification and it conforms to a county detail. So whether, where that's all gonna end up, I can't say, but I would say that yes, the damage is likely a result of the slurry, but the reason the slurry is in there is- uh, I, I, I understand that, okay. Um, did, have we formally notified Granite Rock of this uh, damage aspects? Uh, the, the question is to, to you and, and to Gina, do we need to, to do a formal notification of that I, in I, the event counties coming back to us for costs on this? Yeah, and I, I'm going to recommend that we take the discussion offline and that I um, okay. circle up with Rick and Josh about what steps that Good. we need to take. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, that's all the questions I have. Um, anybody from the public questions on any of the department's status reports? Uh, committee reports, uh, don't see anything else here. Well, then, what is the SLV, WB, DWR, urban draft proposal? Okay, uh, yes. Uh, is that, I don't know. Why is that? There's, there? there's no context. Yes, I don't know what it is. Did you have a question? Oh, yes. Uh, Bob, I believe you uh, had asked if we could provide that. Oh. Yeah. Good. So, but no context. Oh, it's not. It's not actually in there. Well, it's, it's, yeah. the, it's, it's the, it's sort of like there's no introduction oh, or anything like that. Informational material. No context. As to why it's there. You know, I, I get that, but, right. you know, sometimes yeah. uh, uh, time goes by. We need yeah, I, I initially thought this was being sent out as an informational email to the board, so sorry. <laughs> we went back and forth, but I guess that's how it went yeah. out. And so, um, just please, re please refresh my memory on um, what this is for. So this is an application uh, for tank replacements, a grant proposal that was submitted. Ah, okay. And the board had approved the resolution and you had requested to see the proposal. That's the context. Of Excellent. Okay. Good to Ready to I think we have to say we're going to go back into closed session. Closed session. Uh, but we've concluded this portion of the open session. Yes. Yes. Now let's we'll see the logistics when we come out of the closed session. Uh, yes, we do need to reconvene. Um, we could do what we have done uh, for some of these in the past when we've gone back into closed session at the end of the meeting and um, announced for the benefit of the public that there's no anticipated report in the closed session. Um, so um, there won't be any, there's nothing else on the agenda. There's not going to be a report on the closed session. There's not going to be anything happening. Open session once we come back, except for adjourn. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great seeing you. Good seeing you. Good Not really. Oh, really? Mark, what time do you have? I have 7 24. Okay. We're we'll looking at our new clock on. Well, my clock says one thing, that says it one thing. I said saying another one. She works as a I'm not sure if you're going to see me playing a card on the computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs>